Good morning everyone, it's uh, early on Saturday. My name is Michelle, hope you're doing well. This possibly could be a long one because I want to lay everything out that I've been thinking. I want to specifically focus on the script, but I want to put things together like I did the other day, connecting dots of the facts we know, we absolutely know, they're like hardwired into the timeline. Allegations that have been made that are the most credible and starting to exclude the things I think we can exclude at this point. Now, as I lay this out, I'll take it step by step, but as I lay this out, please bear in mind, this is my opinion only. These are allegations that have been made that sound credible but may not be true. And the way that I'm gonna put these dots together could be disproved either by other information or just by connecting dots a different way. But as I've been doing these videos over the last few weeks, I, th I think aloud. So, you know, if you watched every single one of the, I don't know, it's over 50 videos now, in my Summer Wells playlist, you'd see me putting together, you know, the, 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 the reasons why it could have been an abduction, the reasons why it could have been an accident, the reasons why it could be something similar to the Shannon Matthews case. I'm thinking aloud, but I think at, at this point, we're beyond vague speculation, I think, at this point. But still, we are very much in the dark about the majority of the hardwired facts. Right, we're, we're still in the dark about that. I think the TBI have a lot more than what, they, what they've released because quite probably they're putting a case together. They're getting all the ducks in a row. It took the CBI, the Colorado Bureau of Investigation, a year to put the case forward suitable to bring Barry Morphew in. Letitia Stoke was a lot less, wasn't it? Was it about two months, three months, something like that? But still, you know, it depends how, how complicated this thing is. It depends on how many links in the chain there are that we don't know about, right? So be patient on the, you know, investigation front. But meanwhile, the more we talk about this, the more it keeps Summer's name out there. Let's start with why I think this was planned, planned in advance. And because it was planned in advance, Tilly, stop being stupid, come on. Because it was planned in advance, I want to now exclude the accident theory. I'm not saying it's completely impossible. As I said, this is putting my ideas together based on the facts we know them, the allegations, and it could well be an accident. It could be that Don and Candice are absolutely innocent. It could be, it's possible, but it's improbable. And I hope I'm gonna get across in this video that the accident is not impossible, but it's actually quite improbable. And if we exclude the accident and we take this as a pre-planned event, then it starts to narrow down the possibilities of what could have happened to Summer. But if you're wedded to the accident theory, then all power to you because it could well be an accident. But like I said, in my opinion, I don't think it was, and here's why. Okay, so the script. Let's start at the beginning, the 15th of June. So Candice had to take her mother, grandma, to the hospital to the medical centre to get her knee checked out. All right, that's, that's fair enough. 
Now, don't know whether that was a pre-planned appointment or whether that was something that, you know, just just happened. She just went there. I don't know. Doesn't matter. But Candice made a point of being out a long time. Now, didn't Hunter say that originally the plan was to go to a water park in Jonesboro? Jonesboro is the place where Donald was working. That plan didn't come off. Now, is it possible that the abduction was originally planned to take place at the water park in Jonesboro? Don't know. Maybe they realised that was too risky. Don't know. Just interesting thing to think about. Oh, Cassie's in that mud again. She's got her face in that mud again. Oh. Let's think about all the places that Candice went. The places where she would have been caught on camera. Somebody behind them trees. There's a, there's a creek there that separates us. So, all the places that Candice went where she would have been on camera. Now, that's fortunate for Candice. Was that part of the plan? to go out and about, get caught on CCTV here, there and everywhere. You know, take TikToks of summer, having fun. Take that final photograph in the car that summer was alive and well shortly before they arrived home. I don't see Candice and Don as criminal masterminds, but it's quite possible as a planned event that being at home all day wouldn't have provided an alibi. So going here, there and everywhere provides, provides an alibi that you weren't at home till later in the day. Possibly. Donald took the Subaru to work. He says he took the Subaru to work because, well, it was just sitting there. It wasn't being used. So he's going to take a brand new car with dirty drywall tools. He's going to do that on the 15th of June. Don't know how long or how often he took the Subaru other days. But on this day, he chose to take the Subaru. Now, the Subaru has got a GPS system. It's got a tracking system. It, it's a very modern car. And I've been saying all along, what an idiot, that will catch him out because we'll know when he wasn't at work. We'll know his location. He'll be trackable. Perhaps that was the plan. Perhaps that, you know, Donald... Not a criminal mastermind, but I think he's more astute than we give him credit for. Took that with its tracking system to provide an alibi that he was in Jonesboro all day, right? The, he's had co-workers say, yep, we saw him at work. He was there throughout the day. But then we've had other claims saying he left work. He left work for some time. Perhaps it was 35 minutes, as little as that. Perhaps he left for longer. And the co-workers just didn't realise. That Subaru provides an alibi of Donald being in Jonesboro at the time Summer disappeared and when he made the 911 call. What do you think to that? Is that possible? This script, the script, you know, 
Me and my mother were planting flowers, said Candice, in that first press interview. You know, some are, some are really like planting flowers. We saw the little cactuses, the Paw Patrol little figures. Summer did that. It looks like a kid could have done that. But maybe that was done on a different day. Maybe that was set up to look like Summer had planted flowers. I don't know about that. I think it was just, it was done, but it was done on a different day. That's what I think. But they were planting flowers. Then, you know, we'd, we'd put groceries away. There's a, there's a person over there. Let's uh, let's relocate to the middle of the field. Oh, there's a person up there as well. That's annoying. Tilly, I'm gonna put Tilly on a lead. The reason why I'm concerned about this, guys, is because Tilly's actually in season at the moment. So, um, if there's dogs free, do you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I've got a big knot in this. Um, when, I need to get her fixed. I was going to get her fixed. Like, whenever. Before before lockdown and before corona and that. Um, and then I just never have. They were taking emergencies only at my vets and blah, blah, blah. So I need to do it. And I'd forgotten all about it until she came into season. But, uh, yeah, she ran off once when she was in season. Fortunately, though, <coughs> and look at the size of her, right? She's about, I don't know, 25, 26 inches from the shoulder. All right, she's quite a big dog. She decided to run off with a chihuahua, a chihuahua called Harvey. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, so I, I just am being a bit careful. The wind's quite loud. Um... The little fluffy thing that I had on my mic, like here, fell off and I can't find it, so I'm going to uh, make another one. So this script, right? Planting flowers, you know, put the groceries away. You know, apparently the TBI had told Donald that there was there was holes in the timeline and, well, well think about... think about what... what Candice might have done so then we got the additions, we got the, maybe they had a bite to eat. Well, maybe they did, because all they seem to eat is junk. <laughs> Sonic, and she did some laundry. You know, and had to carefully, you know, wait and sit by the washing machine to wait for it to finish. You know, she couldn't, she couldn't do anything else until that had been done, so she could carefully fold the clothes. Come on. Even if, even if she had done laundry on that day, so what? Oh dear. So there's gaps in this timeline, right? But until a few days ago, we'd never heard from Grandma. We'd never heard Grandma's side of the story. And as I said in my video the other day, I think the title is something like, did Grandma give a clue or did Grandma leak a clue? I'll link it in the cards. Kind of, I think it'll pop up there. Because I laid out much of what I'm going to say next. In that video, I've got maps, I've got times, I've got distances based on the addition to the script that Grandma gave us. But Grandma gave exactly the same story, it's almost like word for word. Now, <clears throat> right, Donna wasn't there, so he's got his alibi or alibis in Jonesboro. So we've got two people who were actually there at the time. We've actually got five people because we've got the boys. So the boys, Tilly's off, uh, Cassie's off to join a person now. Cassie, Cass, 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 Cass. Good girl. Good girl. Makes me laugh. People put in my comments, you know, Michelle, watch yourself. It's dangerous. What? What's dangerous? Right. I mean, I mean, an open field. <laughs> Where's the danger, guys? 
I've walked these fields and these woods since I was a little kid. Since before my mother knew that I was playing in these fields. I'm perfectly safe, guys. All right. So if you have two people who are recalling the same story, do you recall it word for word? It triggers me. It doesn't, it, it doesn't ring true. It, it's rehearsed. And it's surprising. Like, given all the other inconsistencies that there's been in this story of what happened throughout the day and the vagueness at which Candice gave her timeline. And I'm not very good with time. I'm not very good with time. It's surprising that these key events keep being said almost word for word again and again and again. That triggers me. Right, I think she can come off once we get past that manure. Because she, uh, she goes and stands in it. I mean, she's already filthy. So she needs a bath anyway, but she's actually pretty clean. So let's keep it that way, shall we, Tilly? So what got me thinking about this script and about the key, that one key difference... Oh, that stinks. <laughs> um, that one key difference was Grandma saying it took them an hour and a half to get home. So fr from that video, that final video of summer that Grandma took mistakenly, and then she took a proper photo, this is hardwired into the timeline that that photograph, that video was taken at 3.09. Oh, that smells. Cassie, 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 Cass, 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 Cass. Good girl. Watch, watch, watch. <laughs> so that's one of the few things that is hardwired into the timeline. Candice said they were five minutes away from home. Now, an eagle-eyed viewer of True Crime Rocket Science has found that location. And it's on Lone Star Road, and it's, a, it's about maybe eight minutes, eight, nine minutes away from home. So given Candice is bad with time, and she really is, she underestimates time, that's a pretty good estimate of where that was taken. So it's the intersection... Lone Star Road with Mirrell Road. If you go down Mirrell Road, it leads you all the way to Jonesboro. But I've been checking this out, right? I've driven the route between home and Kingsport. I've driven the route between Fall Branch I've not gone all the way down to Jonesboro, but Fall Branch and home. I've driven around the mountain because that's where Donald took us. And I thought, mm, is Donald giving us a clue? Do you remember the reenactment video um, that Donald did for Cher and Mr. Cher? It's on the Voices Behind the Walls channel. I'll link it in the description. And um, ignore him going around the shed and down Ben Hill Road, ignore that. But I put on really, really slow speed, him driving around the mountain. And he took us by Chimney Top. There's a thing called Chimney Top Loop. I've driven all around there. It's took me hours, this. Uh, I've driven with Donald <laughs> at mega slow speed to try to find two poles because you see it for a split second through Candace's window, side window. There isn't a place, in all of that road's miles, there isn't a place where there's two poles 
and then there's like a shack or a shed or something in the frame as well looks like it's just behind the poles there isn't another place if you've done this little experiment and you've found another place where there are two poles that can be seen through a driver's side window that's got a little shack next to it then let me know because I'll check it out but that exact spot I think is correct if you look on Google Maps you can see as you come in from Kingsport and you just pass Murrell, the junction of Murrell Road and you're going down Lone Star Road which then comes on to Beach Creek Road there's two poles with a little shack next to it and you can see it see it on the map so I've driven it two ways so I've driven it coming from Kingsport to home and then I've driven it the other way going from home to Kingsport you know it could be that they went home first and then came back out so that the boys would see summer so they're not lying when they're asked by TBI did you see summer did summer come home they can say yes it's possible that they did that uh, they dropped Hunter off around 2.30-ish. So assuming they left at 2.30 and it's about um, 25 minutes between Hunter's house and 110 Ben Hill Road. It is possible that they could have gone home 25 minutes or so, 30 minutes, and come back out. It's possible if they literally left Hunter's, went home and then went straight back out to be at that location for 309. <sighs> they could have left Hunters earlier. Now we know that they were, the prescription was picked up from Walgreens at 133 and then they went to some other locations and TBI will have all this, will have all this surveillance footage. I would, I, I say that's a stretch. I think it's a stretch that they went home so the boys would at least see summer and then come back out. I think they didn't go home. That's what I think. I think the script that they've given is completely rehearsed. I think that script has been gone over and over and over between the three of them. And yes, grandma has to be in on this. She has to be. And I uh, don't even know where I'm walking. What like forever? I'm gonna I'm gonna start walking back because uh, I'm gonna hit private property when I get to there. I'll start walking back. All right. Let's go over what might have happened. They've rehearsed a script, and Summer did not go home. We know from the dog searches that there was a possible hit of Summer going down the driveway. Now Summer sense all over that property. So she could have gone down the driveway or the dog trail at other times recently to play with her brothers, to get the mail, all sorts of things, right? A dog could even scent her if the vehicle windows were open. Her scent could be in that location because they could scent her through the vehicle that passed and scent particles come off, blah, 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 right? But the cadaver dogs did not hit. Now there's question marks on how soon a cadaver dog can pick up the scent of death to the point where they, they actually alert for it. So some people say, yeah, they, you know, she wouldn't have been dead long enough. Some people say she definitely wasn't dead in the house because the cadaver dogs would have picked it up very quickly. I don't know, I don't think it matters in this scenario because I don't think Summer ever made it home. I think the brothers were programmed to, to the same story and these lads have lived in an environment, you know, for 12, 11 and 9 years respectively, with a man and a woman, a mum and a dad, who can behave in the ways we've witnessed them behave, making hoax calls lying about being arrested, being so angry 
that their father blames a five-year-old girl for the essay that he did to her when he was a teenager. Yeah, he was a young lad, he was a young kid. But you're now 56 years old, Donald, and you're still blaming a five-year-old. You're still not taking responsibility. You've taken responsibility for none of what you've said. You've blamed everybody else except yourself for everything. So those lads have lived in that environment. So these lads are programmed to keep a story. They, who knows what these lads have witnessed and have gone to school day after day after day and not said a thing. So the fact that the boys are now in foster care and they'll be receiving specialist therapy to deprogram them from this trauma. Maybe they're now starting to tell a story and break the script. But regardless, grandma brought the script, whether she meant to, because she said, what can I do without Candice knowing? Whether she's feeling guilty, whether she's now realizing this is really serious because she, you know, she's a smart lady. She's a smart lady because she hasn't spoken up to now. She's a smart lady, but she, she went. <laughs> she went to look after her sister's husband, allegedly. She's always there with the family, but yet at this time of crisis, she disappears. Well, yeah, she could be stressed, depressed, of PTSD because she's been through this before with her own 21 year old daughter Rosemary Bly who disappeared 12 years ago and has never been seen. Yep, I understand all that. Yeah, I don't think that's an excuse. I think she's done that to get the hell out of there. But she slipped up. And yes, I do believe that was grandma in those Facebook messages to Crime Stories Obsessed. If it wasn't her, can somebody prove to me definitively that it wasn't? If that can be proven, then this scenario is less likely. Because it, the thing that's triggered me for this, this, this one key break in the script has triggered me because grandma, when asked how far away from home were you when that video was taken, she said one and a half hours. If they were out one and a half hours longer, then the script indicates where the hell were they? Because it's what, 25 or so minutes from Hunter's house to home, about eight minutes from where that last photo and video were taken. So they would have got home about 20 past three. All right. Half three at the latest, I would say. So there's those three hours. Something else that's factored in, hardwired into the timeline, is the 911 call. Now, it came in shortly before. There's two, one from Candice, one from Don. So it's interesting that they both made 911 calls. So the locations of both of them are in the system. Gives Don an alibi. Again, I think Don's been... Don's been smart. So then Don was definitely at work. Candice was definitely at home. She's been out and about all day, really, really busy, gone home, done some housework, you know, being a, being a really, like, diligent mom, you know, walking some of the, what, 20 yards. Come away from that. Oi, Tilly. Come on. Diligently walking some of 20 yards from grandma's front camper to the front door. <laughs> come on, Candice, come on. I believed you. I believed your story for a long time. I don't believe you now. I don't believe it. I think people should be innocent till proven guilty. Yes, in a court of law, but we're not in a court of law. But I, I've come at this from the presumption of innocence, a presumption that the story they gave was basically true and I've worked from there. And they've given me, they've given me <laughs> no reason to believe them now as this thing has unfolded. No reason to believe them now. I know it's really windy, just a sec. 
because I'm uh, right at the top of this hill. I wish the camera could uh, appreciate this view because it's great. I'll go by, back down in the hollow so you, uh, you're you not getting lots of wind noise. Just a sec. That was a split second for you, but a few minutes for me to come down this hill. Don't believe someone ever made it home. So where did they go? Well, let's look at the, uh, at the facts. Did grandma make an intentional slip? She could have made a mistake. She could have confused the time. She might be as bad as time as her daughter. I don't think so, because here's why. So they were at the, just past the intersection on Lone Star Road and Mirrell Road. If Candice had turned down Mirrell Road, because I think it looks more likely that they're going towards home rather than away, just by the positioning of the poles and the, the shack. So I don't think she turned down Mural Road or else she'd have had to like stop and turn back round. The next left turn takes you to Fall Branch and to Jonesboro. So I think she either missed the turn, maybe it's a bit quicker, I don't know. So she went past Mural Road Grandma snapped Summer at 3.09. There's Summer's last photo. There's an alibi of where Summer was. That she was on the road, in the car, in the truck. This is what I laid out the other day. Then go home. Candice went down to Jonesboro. From Lone Star Road, from that location. It's about half an hour. I think there was a handoff with Donald in Jonesboro. Why there was a handoff, I don't know. We could speculate that this is very similar to the Shannon Matthews case, that this abduction has all been planned and, uh, you know, they're gonna hide her somewhere and they're gonna, you know, find her at some point in the future when the reward money is sufficiently high. That's a possibility. It's very improbable, right? I think it's probably more likely that this handoff wasn't pre-planned that they're gonna collect reward money. I think all the gifts and donations and things that they've received is a, is a happy accident. But I don't know, I just, I just think yeah, there's some similarities, as I laid out yesterday, there's some similarities with Sean and Matthew's case, and it is possible, you know, someone's being hidden and that was the plan that, you know, she can be found, you know, like Elizabeth Smart and Donald will be famous and, you know, because he wants to be a movie star because he's such a narcissist. I don't know, what do you think? That's best case scenario for Summer because it means she's safe somewhere. She might not be well, but she's safe somewhere. The other way, way, way more sinister options are that uh, this is part of trafficking, that she's been sold for drug money, or for, you know, she's been sold. And she's become part of the trafficking ring that's rife in East Tennessee. I watched a video this morning by The Lab, who laid out some really interesting facts about trafficking in Tennessee. So I'll leave a link to that in the description box. She's been neglected, she's been abused. They never really wanted Summer. Donald has kept her for purposes. And now she's due to start school. Maybe she had to go and uh, didn't murder her. They sold her. And the handoff was Candice and Grandma handed her over to Donald and Donald went and did the transaction. I mean, Jonesboro, it's like less than 30 miles away from the uh, state line between Tennessee and North Carolina. You know, take her across the state line. She disappears. I've always said, if someone, whether it be an abductor or a parent, took her across the state line to North Carolina from Jonesboro, that's very close. 
uh, to Virginia. He's very, very close. She disappears. She disappears into this system of trafficking. She's alive. Oh, she's been back in the mud. But um, unfortunately, her fate is horrific. Absolutely horrific. Maybe now there's, uh, you know, a movie script in Donald's head. Maybe, uh, maybe he does think there's going to be a movie. Maybe he does think that, um, you know, he could get her back and she'd be miraculously found. Who knows? Who knows what goes through that man's head? The other option is that she's been given to somebody for an hour or two for an essay transaction and uh, they didn't return her when they said they were going to. Maybe they were going to return her to the bottom shed, you know, on the property. Maybe they're going to return her there. Maybe that's why Donald went straight to that shed. I'm, I'm, I'm speculating now, right? I'm just saying maybes, maybes, maybes. But we know Donald went to that shed first. Why? Is there, was there things in that shed he didn't want people to see that he needed to clear up? What do you reckon? But that would fit this one and a half hours that Grandma let slip. Half an hour into Jonesboro. A little bit of time to speak to Donald. And then back home. Another, what, 35, 40 minutes. So it's close enough to one and a half hours. Let me know what you think. I've walked miles. I've not, actually. I don't know. It's probably only about two miles. It just looks further because this uh, this lens is wide angle. So it looks... It looks probably bigger than it is anyway right i'm gonna go or else i'm gonna start waffling let me know your comments below this is just a theory i'll reiterate again this is my opinion putting things together based on the hardwiring facts plus some allegations that have been made trying to get the timeline right and knowing what we know about the state of trafficking in tennessee and especially knowing what we know now about Summer's parents who horrifically a failed battle girl. But if you have Summer, if you're listening to this and you know where Summer is, please, please, please let her go. People from all over the world want that little girl home. Return her, make an anonymous call to the TBI, drop her off anywhere. Anywhere. Just let her go. Let her go to a better home than she's had for the last five years. Do the decent thing. Everybody, I believe, everybody's got a little bit of decency in them. You just have to find that little bit of decency in you to let Summer go home. And Summer, if you ever listen to this, I live thousands of miles away from you I live at the other side of the big ocean and I and many 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 other people want to see you safe want to see you cared for want to see you feeling better than you might do right now Summer everybody loves you and everybody is working really really hard to get you back to safety from all over the world and maybe one day summer you can visit all of the places you know all of the people who looked for you from my country in England to Australia to South Africa all over your country Canada maybe one day you can visit all of those places maybe hopefully Okay, guys, this has been a long one. This is going to take me forever to edit and forever to upload because my internet is crap. But, uh, yeah, let me know what you think in the comments below. I've been Michelle. Hope you're doing well. Goodbye from Miss Tillington, Miss Cassie Springer, who's going to run into those bushes. She always goes in there. I have no idea what's in there. I'm going to have to go and investigate one day. But, uh, yeah, goodbye from us. See you soon.